Environment ministers from around the world, including Canada's Catherine McKenna, wrapped up three days of talks in advance of the Paris Climate Conference that begins at the end of the month. McKenna and the new Liberal government say Canada will do more on climate change. Prime Minister Trudeau says he wants Canada to play a bigger role on the issue after years of dragging its feet. Here's what McKenna told CBC News. I think the message is Canada's back internationally that we understand that we need to be playing a constructive role on the world stage. Uh, we need to be working with our global partners. And then certainly when it comes to, to uh, addressing climate change, that's a huge priority of our government. So is this a lot of hot air, pardon the pun, or is Canada ready to act? The big picture returns. Bill Robson is president and CEO of the C.D. Howe Institute. Armin Yelnesian is senior economist at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. Goldie Hyder is president and CEO of Hill and Knowlton Strategies. And Goldie, let's start with you because you're in the PR business and it seems like there's been a lot of uh, big steps here made or big uh, symbolic moves by the, the new government, you know, changing the title of it to be Environment Minister F and climate change, you know, inviting Elizabeth May to come to Paris, inviting the premiers, etc. What's behind all of that, do you think? Well, they've doubled down, haven't they? I mean, they've clearly doubled down. I think there is a general recognition that uh, the efforts of the last Prime Minister and the last administration for the last 10 years, despite the desire to be a world energy superpower, very little actually got done. And so obviously they've taken an approach that says, uh, as I said, I'm encouraged by the comments that uh, some of them have made with respect to recognizing the need to access markets. But there's a general recognition that we clearly need to do more uh, from, a, from not just a branding perspective. I think we have a brand, uh, brand issue as well globally. Uh, certainly the president didn't help with his remarks the other day. Uh, but, but to be able to say what exactly is Canada going to do to, to be a part of a process that has to be well beyond Canada. I mean, let's, you know, the, the oil sands is like less than 1% of the emissions out there in, 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 in the marketplace. So clearly Canada can't go it alone. This, this minister, this government has to find partners who are able to move uh, in the right direction in a systematic, uh, methodical way that doesn't compromise our economy. Yes, well, McKenna was talking about, you know, we have to, whatever we say we're going to do, we have to be able to do, so let's be realistic. Let's check in on that. Uh, are you buying it, Bill? Well, I referred earlier to Canada's record of talking big and you go back to the Kyoto commitments that were made on the fly with absolutely no clue how we would get there and indeed we didn't. We never did any of the things that would have been necessary because they would have been too painful. Uh, so I think that there's a real issue here. Uh, in fact, it's a whole international thing. It would be remarkable if the amount of CO2 not emitted over the next few years even equaled what they're emitting by having these two conferences. Um, um, if you really want to cut your CO2 emissions, this would be a fortuitous time to do it because the price of fossil fuels has fallen and we know the high prices that were out there were depressing demand. That's why we now have this glut. So if you're serious, put a tax on. We can have fuel taxes as they've done in BC. It's very straightforward. It does reduce CO2 emissions. You could even, because most economic activity generates carbon dioxide, uh, raise the GST again. But if you're serious, that's the sort of thing you have to do, not just go to international conferences, talk about targets 20 years out, and then hit whichever producers you figure are politically vulnerable. Please don't say GST, Bill. <laughs> that's what, yeah, you want to, you, you got to cut consumption if you want to cut Are, CO2 emissions, and that's one way to do it. Well, you made a good point about the consumer's role in all of this, Armin. What do you think of that? Well, I actually think that the uh, plummeting oil price has done more on climate change policy than any public policy has done because it has kept more developments off the books, made them uneconomic, and so consequently has bought us time to talk about how but are we going to But it's raising consumption because the fuel is cheaper. It's actually making the problem worse. It's not better. People you don't want cheap fuel cars. if you're worried about <laughs> CO2 emissions. Okay, you so I'm going fi to finish. I don't think I do have it backwards. Oh, I think well. part of it is about extraction, and we know that extracting oil through the oil techniques that we have right now is a huge contributor to GHG emissions and increases the supply of oil that will, if it's above the ground, will get consumed one way or another. They're, but so they're getting more efficient with some of those it's things. It's not about and then you've got it's the about combustion the on your cars. using it once you've extracted it, as you're saying. And so I couldn't agree more with Bill that, in fact, this is the time to raise carbon taxes. I think this is, pricing carbon 
is going to be one of the next things. And it is a, an all of the planet initiative. Just today, U.S. Secretary of State uh, John Kerry said he was looking at making a bridge between foreign uh, affairs planning and climate change policy. I think it's a great time that we have a change of government to work with the biggest economy in the world on this project. What's your level of cynicism when it comes to conferences <laughs> like this? I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, Elizabeth May, she's on her way, but already she's been saying this is going to be a, a disastrous treaty that won't go anywhere near far enough, etc. Uh, and then you just even think about the logistics. All these countries with so many different concerns, are they going to agree on anything? You were talking about what happened with Kyoto, Bill. Yeah, I think it's about their negotiating a press release that they think is going to sound good. Uh, then they have to get back to their own realities. The democracies have their electorates to deal with. If you're not a democracy, if you're China, uh, you've got enormous pressure to continue to grow because that's where the legitimacy of the regime comes from. If you're India, you're a democracy that isn't yet uh, have a high level of living standards and you're very anxious to get your uh, population access to electricity, more motor vehicles on the road to move food and everything else that they need. Uh, so it runs up against those realities. And I keep coming back to my point, if you're serious, and I don't think the United States is, uh, you would put a tax on the consumption of it. And when I see the United States do that, then I'll know they're serious. Uh, when they're talking about international this and that, uh, they're just deflecting. Paris, or uh, Goldie, do you think Paris is going to move any of this forward in any way? Meaningful no, I, way? I, I think we have enough history to know that these conferences are, are ultimately, as Bill said, about that final you know, communique where they kind of agree to the bare minimum and, and, and or make commitments that they can't keep, which again, as Bill referred to, our, 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 the Liberal government when Mr. Kretchen did that without a plan. So I'm not too uh, focused on that as much as I am the actual actions that the government is going to take here. When you're running a $1.9 trillion economy and you're responsible for the unemployment rate, and you're trying to get people educated and, and uh, be a part of our economy. Yes, it's easy to do the carbon tax. I think everybody in the panel here is saying that's, that day is probably coming and, and, it's, and it's coming soon, soon rather than later fine but we still need a, 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 a plan here as to how a natural resource economy and you know, I saw a poll after the election that said 68 percent of Canadians continue to believe that we need to find ways to get access to markets that natural resource economy requires us to be able to sell our products and services okay 38 percent said no climate change is the most important issue even if it means higher unemployment even if it means that you know we're not able to build the kind of economy that we need understand that there are consequences to those kind of binary choices that not only harm the economy but harm the very social infrastructure and the social fabric that makes Canada as great as it is and we have to be honest about those conversations and not Pollyannish about it. Now you know, do you think there's a chance that Canada will not win the fossil of the year award? I've been five years running you know that we've been singled out for this dubious distinction. I think that one of the things that I, I just want to go back to what Goldie said and also what Brad Wall said in your previous uh, segment which is that who wins with more fossil fuels being sold and brought to market are the businesses that own the resource and the government coffers. Who and the wins people who have the talking? jobs. And who but, wins but mostly? I, mean, I, mean, there's I would like to finish gold. When in Canada, we have the ability to me. help our own uh, people in Eastern Canada to get oil from Canada and let them get it from Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. At least agree with me that fundamentally, okay. that's wrong. Suppose we thought that people were eating too much. Would we tax the farmers who are growing the food? Or would I'm we just going to try and finish my line, which quickly. is that more yes. energy is being produced through solar and renewable. I'm sorry, more jobs are being produced through solar and renewable in Alberta, in Texas, than with oil. Oil is an extremely capital intensive industry. You want more jobs as well as more money? We should carry the start oil in that buckets. Shift towards, <laughs> that's what we start the shift towards renewables. That's where the future is demanding yeah. it. And what can we achieve in, in we Paris? Can, we'll Maybe mills. some momentum. Yeah. You know, maybe some momentum. Maybe that's the biggest thing that's happening. Just like there's momentum towards talking about we don't have social sanctions for this. There may be momentums on how we momentum on how we can work together. To but I mean, we're we not need. disagreeing. Right, we're out of time. I mean, Thank you very much. No lack of, of momentum you. on talk. That's for <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Thanks so much. Good to see.